Hi guys, this is Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Thank you so much for dropping in. Um, today I'm going to be making another one of these really cute little um, bee and beehive cards. This is actually my second attempt to get a video out uh, making this little guy. I won a contest on Instagram from Momenta and this was one of die cut sets that they sent me. I also had a video on this earlier this week so go ahead and check that one out as well. So anyway this is a cute little shaker but it's got little shaker bits behind these little honeycomb windows. I've got a couple of bees on there with some um, some shimmer to the wings and I've even got some um, embossing on the background that you can't really see. I have thought um, initially that maybe I would make the windows a little bit bigger but um, I think this turned out really really cute so let's go ahead and make another one. Um, first thing that I did was I had done <clears throat> using some of the paper that I got from them. I used this embossing folder from Cuddlebug. It is the honeycomb and I used some I uh, used some well in Sorry about that. I've used some wow embossing powder, um, embossing ink to be able to emboss into the little grooves that were cre created with the embossing folder. Now this isn't actually necessary on it, but like I said, I thought that the windows might be a little bit bigger when I initially had the concept in my head on last night. And I just um, used some gold embossing powder. I think this turned out really cute and I'll do that same kind of technique on a future video. And I had also die cut a few little things out. Um, this is the honeycomb. I'm sorry, this is the beehive from this die here and then we've got a mama bee and a baby bee and first thing I'm going to do I think what I'm going to go ahead and do first is go ahead and give them a little bit of color and to do that I'm just going to back part of the I'm going to back their tails with some yellow cardstock now this is pretty easy to do all I did was I laid this down on my cardstock And I do tend to line it up close to the edge so I don't use up too much of the scrap. Save some of that. I just draw around the area that I want to use. Now what I'll need to do is cut inside that line so that it doesn't go over. And you see we do have this black line here so as long as it doesn't go inside of that black line we're good to go. And you can tell from where I cut from the scrap that I did cut inside of that line. So hopefully I didn't cut too far in. I'll just line that up and I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take my art glitter glue and glue that onto the back. And now the bee has a yellow tail. And then for the wings I like the look of vellum on that so that they're partially see-through. So let me grab a scrap of vellum. And then we're going to do the same thing. And I'm going to say that that one is close enough. So I'll go ahead and add some glue to the back of my B. Okay, next I'm going to take this little honeycomb die got right here. I cut a couple of windows in this. Now I want as much of this pattern to show. I really like that. So I think what I'm going to wind up doing is putting the honeycomb, I mean the beehive around over here and then I'll do, I think I'll do the, honey, the honeycomb cutouts basically the same kind of positions as the other. And then I'm going to keep all these little cutouts and use them on the inside of the card. <laughs> I 
Okay, so this is kind of what it's going to look like once we get everything put together. So next I'm going to grab a scrap of some clear transparency as we always keep all of our scraps. And this one, that one's actually perfect size. And I'm going to use some score tape to hold that down well. And I always burnish the score tape down because I, I don't know why, but whenever I put it down, it doesn't quite want to stick as well as it should. So sometimes I wind up pulling up the adhesive and ripping my paper <laughs> when all I'm wanting to do is get that release paper off. So there's one window. And let's get the other one. So next we're going to want to create the wells for the little shaker bits and I'm going to just use some foam tape that I've got from Amazon and I only want the shakers to be in those windows. There's no point in putting a bunch extra that's not going to be seen. So I'm just going to put some foam tape in between and make sure that it's just around those two guys. And you want to make sure that the foam tape butts up against one another so that it doesn't, that none of your shaker bits can get out. And since some of the spaces are narrower than my um, my foam tape, I'm cut, just cutting some down. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do different than I did the first time around, because it didn't work out that well, is I'm going to, instead of filling the wells here with my shaker bits, I'm going to put them on this and hopefully be able to line everything up without having a problem. And I'm just using some seed beads for this. And I'm going to guesstimate where they're supposed to be. Okay, those look like they're about positioned right. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to add some powder inside so hopefully they don't stick on the foam tape and they will shake around a little bit better. Just going to test it one more time, make sure everything is still in place. Yep except for a couple little beads. I just want to give a little bit more color to this panel and to the little honeycombs that we pulled out. So I'm going to get out some Distress Oxide ink. Actually, I think I'm going to use my Distress Ink and Antique Linen because that's nice and light. And then maybe use some of the Fossilized Amber, which is not as light, but still more yellow. And it won't be quite as harsh. And I just want to add a little bit more of that nice pretty yellow color on the panel itself. So next, because I want to see a little bit of differentiation between the 
the panel and the honeycombs in there. I'm going to add some color to those as well, mostly on the edges. Gonna add a little touch of frayed burlap to that as well, just to get a little bit darker tone. But I don't want it to be harsh, so. Okay, now you can see that honeycomb a little bit better. <clears throat> so now I will just go ahead and glue these guys down. They're going to go right over the plastic. Okay, next we've got the honeycomb. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out that honeycomb and then I can cut it out and then do a little ink blending on it as well for the background of that other honeycomb. That's got to be cool. And then let's check and make sure that it fits. And that's going to work out well. Another thing I want to do is I want the opening to be a little bit darker than some of the rest. So I'm going to, I just <coughs> drew that on there too. I think I'm going to start off with some fossilized amber, give it a little bit of a yellow tinge for the whole thing. Okay. And then take a smaller brush where'd I put it and get some of the darker colors so I'm gonna go with the frayed burlap See how that looks. Looks pretty good, but I do want some more shading, I think, on one of the sides. And there's our little beehive. So I'll just glue that together. Actually, going to curve the wings up just a touch. I'm not putting any adhesive underneath them, partially because it is vellum, but partially I want it to be able to pop up just a little bit. I'm not using pop dots or anything because you would see those through the through the little wings. We don't want that. And let's just put him right about there, or her. I think it's probably the mama bee. Then we've got our little baby bee. And then I am going to take my Sharpie and draw his little antenna back on. There, and nobody would even notice that. And that also gives us plenty of room to be able to add a sentiment down here. I'm not adding a sentiment onto it today because I'm not sure what I'm going to use this card for yet. But let me go ahead and add them to card base. 
And because it's got so much dimension and everything, I'm going to actually add score tape to the card base itself <coughs> and then add the, the panel on. So I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit because we are going to have a slight white edge on here. And I'll burnish all of that down. And then because I want to make sure that everything is on there straight, I'm going to use a little trick that I saw on YouTube probably two years ago and then I don't use it as often as I probably should. Everything would go on straighter if I did. It's just making these little um, handles on the side to hold on to On, hold on to as you're positioning your panel onto your card base. That way you can move it around a little bit and then when you're ready, when you're all done, then you can press it down and firmly and then it'll stay in place. Okay, and that is the upside and downside. So good. So I'm just going to position that, try to get the borders about even. And then press it down and pull off the rest of the tape. And then as a final touch, I'm going to use some Wink of Stella on the wings. I think that just adds that last little final piece. And I think that makes the beast just so darn cute. This finishes up the card for today. I hope that I've helped to inspire you to get out your supplies and create something today. And I would love to see what you make. So come join me and other crafters over in my Facebook group. There's a link in the description box below. Again, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And remember, if I can make it, you can too.